Welcome to Message from God with Carolina. Um, I am here today with a word from God that um, I pray to remove any spirit of fear from within me so that I can um, best express what God is putting in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit today to share with you. Um, because as I was reading scripture today, there was something that disturbed my spirit and it the Holy Spirit pushed me to speak on this. So I pray to do this in the way that the Lord wants me to do it and not with any obstacle. Amen. So today I am at, I'm, I'm reading Luke chapter 8, verse 26. And I'm not going to read everything, but um, this is about when Jesus restores a demon-possessed man. They sailed to the region of Gerasenes, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. I'm going to stop here. This is someone who was completely possessed. And I want you just to take notice that he had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. Okay, after this, Jesus delivers him from the spirit, uh, from the demonic spirit. Those demonic spirits beg to go into um, the, the pigs that were on the hillside. Jesus goes ahead he, and he does that. He allows them to go into the, the uh, pigs and they um, ultimately drown. I'm going to skip now because God is trying to bring your attention to this part here. And right now I'm at Luke, wow, um, Luke 8, 34. It says, when those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out. Pay attention here. It says, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind and they were afraid. I'm putting a pin at that, at that line right there. They were afraid, okay? I asked myself, why were these people afraid? They saw that this man who had been possessed by demons for so long, who did not wear clothes, did not have a home, he was completely possessed by multiple demons, okay? That's why when, uh, when Jesus asked him around Luke 8.30, he says, what, what is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had gone into him. So it wasn't one demon, it was multiple demons. This man was consumed, he was possessed. So why is it, why is it that when people were able to see what Jesus had done and they're able to see the result, this man is completely transformed, he is in his right mind, he is clothed and he is at the feet of Jesus. Why were they afraid? I'm gonna continue. Luke 8:36 Those who had seen it told the people how the demon possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerar Gerar sorry, Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. Again, they were overcome with fear. They they told Jesus to leave. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. He begged to go with Jesus, but Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. So now I'm going to break this down because God has an, an important message for whoever's watching today. Um, he shared with me as I read the scripture, just how nasty people are. And I'm not talking about people um, who are victims of, of demon possession. 
I'm talking about people like you and me. This is how nasty we can have we can be in our spirit. The reason why I use the word nasty is because this is the way the Lord is showing it to me in his eyes. He views it as something appalling, something disgusting. When if there is someone consumed in need of help, it may not be specific, you know, demons or multiple things like that that, that are uh, obviously not going to be clear to us as as fellow um, friends, neighbors, family members, whatever it is, we might not know exactly what is bothering that person, right? But if we see that there is a person who is troubled in the spirit, right? As a people of God, if you see someone who's troubled in the spirit, a lot of times God is trying to correct this and um, specifically in his church, in the body of Christ, if you see that someone is disturbed, we tend to um, not be afraid by that. We're not afraid of that. We're not afraid that there's someone who is is uh, struggling financially, someone struggling with substances. We're not afraid of that. We're not afraid when someone is um, a little bit sad and that's just who they always are, right? That's just what we always see. So we're not afraid of that because it's common. It's, it's what we've seen. And we also don't have the, the capacity to change that. Um, some people even benefit off of other people's downfalls, okay? But for some reason, when Christ comes into the picture and he touches a person, not only just to, um, to expose himself to them. Listen, this man, he had multiple demons within him and, and they recognized who Jesus was. And from the get-go, they said, please, like, don't torture me, Jesus. Don't torture us. They didn't want to get out of that man. And if so, they wanted to get into something else. They wanted to get into the pigs. So they already knew and they were afraid of the power of Christ. Jesus did not come to try to scare the man. He did not come uh, from a place of negativity. Instead, he transformed the man by delivering him from these demons. And I'm going back now to the fact that these people were afraid. Why were they afraid when they saw the man clothed at the feet of Jesus? Let me tell you something. If you ever think that Jesus was some kind of soft or peaceful, very um, just sugar-coated person within history, and you don't you don't realize that people feared what he did. I pray that God has mercy, you know, because there is a lot of uh, waking up that has to be done. There's a lot of waking up that has to be done. And it, and, and it begins when we start to feel convicted by the fact that we are just like these people. If you see someone who has had a life without Christ before and was kind of spiraling downwards, and then let's say you see this person again, and they're transformed. Not just that they're speaking about God, but you start to see that God has transformed them. Okay, that's something different. Um, and I need to emphasize that today because many of us can talk about God. Many of us can quote scripture. Many of us can say, um, oh, you know, thank you, Jesus. Or I pray that, you know, my life will be manifesting in these wonderful things in the name of Jesus, right? You can say all of that stuff. That doesn't mean that you are transformed and walking with Christ. That doesn't mean anything. That's how the enemy tricks us sometimes because he makes us believe that that's sufficient um, or that that person is is on a good path or that, that person is not so bad um, and it doesn't make us see truth it doesn't expose any demons it doesn't do any anything like that it sugarcoats things um, and so that's how sometimes people just um, use scripture kind of like a scarf and um, and will just cover themselves temporarily but they don't really have it in their blood in their system in their DNA they haven't really um, had one-to-one -one conversations with God they haven't repented repentance is not just um, I'm sorry and I'll do it again but repentance is I, I'm gonna transform in the name of Jesus I'm going to actually change my ways in the name of Jesus because I have faith that he can do it through me something that I can't do on my own and so as we see this man who was possessed by demons he could not deliver any of them uh, he, he could not remove them from his spirit on his own Jesus did that. He called them out and he moved them out. And so what I'm trying to say here, what the Holy Spirit is trying to um, communicate right now through this message is we need to shift our focus on what we are afraid about. 
We need to shift our focus on what we are afraid about. Because so, so many times we see things that are dysfunctional, people that are dysfunctional, and we're not afraid of what's actually going on underneath the surface. We're fine with the demons there. We're fine with that. We're, we're comfortable with that. But for some reason, when Jesus delivers people out of those situations, when he does his thing, that scares us. That scares people. That scares your witnesses. That scares the people who do not understand. So if, if anyone is aware of what they are praying for, if you are aware of what you're actually asking God to do, when you say, please save me, please help me, please deliver me from this, just know that it's going to scare people and it's going to transform you. But at the end of the day, you will be the one who is now newly clothed at the feet of Jesus and transformed. And I pray that instead of asking Jesus to move away because anyone else is afraid, I pray that other people are, are aware that it was him who transformed us and what he actually removed from your life. Um, and see, that was another point that God pointed, uh, that God showed me. It was very interesting that when, um, when this man wanted to go with Jesus, he told him to stay. He told him to stay and he left him kind of like a seed to be planted where he was, in his home at the time being, in his home place, so that he can continue to tell people what Jesus had done. These people were so consumed. And God is showing me that they themselves have demons because they're okay with the demons that you may have had in the past. So I pray that you can continue to just clarify in the name of Jesus whatever it is that God is delivering you from or whatever it is you're praying that God delivers you from. That you are aware of the consequence afterwards on the external life around you. That people will be afraid and that the, the step afterwards is to show this is what God has delivered me from. He doesn't want us to be afraid as the ones who are being transformed, but when you are the one being transformed, when you are the one being delivered from things that have led you astray, you're not the one scared. You're going to get even closer to God. When you are following Christ, not everyone understands and not everyone will accept and not everyone will like it and they will actually be repelled by the Spirit of God. So I pray that this protects you, that this word um, gives you uh, awareness, a little perspective on, on what it's like when people react to your transformation.